Hey everyone, it's Greg here from Peercat and welcome to the Just A Meme podcast where we chat to teams using blockchain technologies to solve real world problems. Today, very excited to bring you Yaz from Verify Ed, who, where they're building tamper-proof digital certificates and credentials, empowering the future of work. So really good to have you here. I know we've met before, but it'd be really great to dig into your background a bit more and sort of like tell the community about you. <laughs> cool. Thanks a lot, Greg. Um, thanks for having me on the show and really, yeah, really excited to talk to anyone in our space who's looking to build the future. Um, using blockchain you know yeah. it's been a phenomenal journey for us so far um but yeah just a little bit about myself so my name is Yaz al i'm the co-founder and ceo of verify ed a company we founded three years ago where having been in my background has been in higher education where i worked at the university of winchester for about 14 years um doing every role from hourly paid lecturer through to um senior exec team for director of learning and teaching and student engagement. So knew the educational space quite well. Um, and had also worked for ed tech companies like Instructure, Cortex and Refme uh, around the, well, in Utah and in Europe, um, building high performing teams. And actually having had experience in both of those areas, I was really excited to see if something could be built that wasn't just for while people were at university, yeah. but actually moving into a lifelong learning journey and starting to understand people doing more micro-credentialed learning and the ability for them to upskill when they're in work, et cetera, as well as the traditional studying routes. Um, so I was, I was working, um, at Cortex when I started getting into crypto, I guess most people find uh, blockchain and the technologies that underpin it, um, having dipped their toes into crypto. And I just started reading about how xrp might try and bridge currencies globally and allow the the future transport of money around the world to move like data yep and it really piqued my interest and i thought yeah there, there does feel like there's a lot of friction there a lot of the rationales were pre pretty powerful and then i thought well why isn't anyone looking at removing some of that friction when students leave university why aren't we creating a lifelong learner bond with students as they graduate typically when i was in the university we'd graduate students and we'd say good luck we'll speak to you in the future to see how you're getting on in your work um and we'd switch off their email remove their library access and almost cut ties with the student and it felt um it didn't feel quite right. It felt like we were losing a potential, but also we'd built up such a strong relationship. It's a, it's a shame to lose it at the point where you give someone a paper certificate. Um, and I just kept thinking about this idea of increasing certificate fraud internationally, the ability for us as an institution to maintain better relationships with our learners and for the learners themselves to have something that's 21st century ready that can be shared remotely around the world. Um, many people looking at remote work uh, opportunities in different countries actually uh, and you look at the growth of remote and deal and you know trying to help some of those remote workers have a great experience being onboarded wouldn't it be great if during that onboarding process you just shared a blockchain backed immutable certificate that says i've got this degree from here i've got these skills from here and i've done these micro credentials on these platforms all in one place easy to share curate and for the learner to hold through their lifetime um, so we started validating and literally it started on a bike ride where I mentioned it to a, a friend of mine that Abby and I had been mentioning, uh, been discussing and it grew into a journey and it literally started bike ride. Well, validate it, just speak to some people, see if people would actually use this. Is it going to be useful just in education or beyond? And we, um, we started speaking with the law society of Ireland and they actually went on to become our first, uh, production client. Uh, issuing for CPD. They have to be able to monitor the amount of CPD that the lawyers are doing across uh, any year so that they can maintain professional standing. And they just said, it'd be amazing if we could actually move to a digital model where everything's issued, we can centrally and easily access what people have done and how they've done it in which mode, et cetera. And we're able to easily aggregate that into a professional membership qualification or credential. Um, and so we've been working with them on that and then now scaling across the institution this year, which is fantastic, but it's, it's largely an analog to digital transformation for them. Whereas for other institutions like university of Middlesex, uh, also scaling this, this year have been, um, 
the University of Middlesex said they wanted to better surface the skills that students are getting through their degrees. I think there's a lot of academic language used uh, in learning outcomes and in program outcomes that aren't necessarily easily understood by employers. So the use cases of why people want to use our platform and the digital credentials that we've got backed by blockchain um, building on the XRPL has been actually quite varied. But interestingly, it's wherever it can help remove friction, wherever it can create automation and create uh, increased speed. Um, and that's been a phenomenal journey to be on. It's had highs and lows, no doubt, <laughs> as I'm sure you're aware, um, the, these journeys always do, and it takes certain mindsets and certain individuals, I think, to go and embark on them. But we have been supported by phenomenal investors. Um, we've raised half a million to date to get to the, where we are, and we're looking to raise 1.2 now to really accelerate the traction that we've got. We've just got our first national opportunity as well, um, where we really feel people are starting to understand what the benefit of having a digital immutable credential um, would be for both end learners and the institutions issuing them. So it feels like we're starting to build momentum. Um, and we're also really pleased, I think, as part of our journey, because we've been closely watching XRPL developments, um, particularly around uh, certain uh, improvements, uh, XLS20, et cetera, and others that other people are watching. Mm -hmm. But we're able to receive an XRPL grant as part of wave two. Um, which has allowed us to validate and try and better understand how other people may want to use our verification process of the mutable issued data in other verticals. So for insurance or health or other areas, which aren't yeah. so educational future of work focused. Um, and that's been a really eye opening experience speaking to really incredible names that I, I won't mention here, but really high level, uh, luxury brands as well as, uh, health service providers. Yeah. I think there's, there's multiple things I want to unpack there. Um, <laughs> so I guess, I guess starting with the platform, the sort of idea that you want a centralized, uh, I use the word centralized, a place where an institution can go and check, or even a job employer it isn't you know, and check people's credentials it isn't so much a new idea, but it's interesting how blockchain here feels like very appropriate for it. You get some things where they're trying to shoehorn blockchain into it. Um, but this, this sort of fits, feels like it fits incredibly well. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to sort of talk about that, like how an open ledger is <laughs> better in this case than a... <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's important to, to mention that we've got regulatory elements that we have to consider as well um, through GDPR and other regulators. So in actually the way that we've had to create the platform and to be able to create blockchain immutability behind it, whilst also mm -hmm. preserving privacy has been uh, quite a challenge. And we're open to speaking to other members in the community who are um, also dealing with that situation and then looking at how they can be writing other uh, data to the blockchain in a privacy preserving way. I think that's one of the key areas that we'd like to learn more from other people in the community about, but in our perception of starting in a situation where blockchain has a relevant, uh, importance, lots of people are just adding it as a layer, create buzzword and great. We've got business that uses blockchain, but it's just unnecessary. Whereas in the realm that we are, we see ourselves as being a bridge between web two and web three. And until people and web three technology is until the infrastructure I think is mature enough to allow the mass populations to use it, um, easily with, you know, backup and support. So you lose your keys, you lose everything. It's, um, it's quite a high risk, uh, um option for some, well, for many people. And so I, I think that there is a, a development that will continue and that evolution will continue where it will become appropriate for the mass population to engage, but you already are starting to see it with sub-sovereign identity, the ability for digital ID schemes that are happening in every country. Every country is looking at how digital ID can be better serving for the society, but I'm sure also to better enhance, uh, awareness for services that are provided across the country, et cetera, hopefully no nefarious, um, uh, desires, et cetera. But ultimately we believe that digital identity will be a positive good for society. And actually 
if it's in a decentralized way where I own my identity and it's not something that can just be in a centralized way shut down, then it, it creates the best of both worlds that, you know, there is central, um, evidence and visibility, but decentralized control and ownership. And I think that's where we start to find uh, greater trust in society. Um, and so that's one of the reasons I think we see ourselves playing in a digital identity sphere. And that is where I think blockchain could be uh, hyper powerful. And particularly when you think about how a lot of the projects around finance um, have been pushing in this area for the unbanked to become banked uh, and to access this space. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, it's interesting. I, I was thinking while you're saying that, like one of the big problems with decentralized systems, and it'd be interesting to see how you're solving this is the, the issue of getting off-chain data via oracles into the system. Now, I think in a university environment, that's, that's going to be okay. Cause you've probably got the professors and stuff. They, they can all log into one system sort of thing, upload it, or maybe you scrape it from their existing systems and whatever it is and feed it all in so that people slowly know, I guess. Yeah, so we approve, we approve everyone who issues through our platform. Yeah. Okay. So there's no, there's no scraping of data. We literally, if people issue through us, we'll then say by guarantee, this qualification has been issued by this yeah. issue, learner. And that's the way that we're getting around, um, one of the things, which is actually verification of data, um, where currently it costs 12 pound in the UK approximately. It's actually slightly more. We, we ran through the process ourselves of verifying a UK degree, we go yep. through an organization called head owned by JISC, um, and that process actually can take quite a long period of time, took us a month and 34 steps. And we documented it, um, just for our own learning of understanding what the current problem is, but by issuing an immutable credential means that by guarantee, someone can access it, trust that it's accurate and that it's correct. And if it's still verified against the data that was issued in the first instance, then for free, an individual is able to verify that that's there. So it removes a cost, it removes time. And in many cases, it becomes a manual process for the institutions to go back through records and check this. Yeah. So we're working with institutions where they have to be a, uh, they have to be a partner. They have to be able to access the, the system to be able to issue directly through the system. So that's the way we guarantee the data that's coming in is quality and is trusted. Um, and it also means that we have an opportunity when an institution wishes to become a mentor, uh, um, a partner, they can, uh, they go through our uh, quality checks effectively to verify that it's an authentic institution that's issuing valid credentials. Um, we've seen a lot of examples where badges and such like are being issued by other parties and yeah, yeah. they're dubious to say the least. I, I would say some are clearly just advertising um, yeah. and some are, yeah, spam. Yeah. It'd be, yeah, I was, I was thinking about the, the other couple of use cases you mentioned, high-end fashion, stuff like that. And thinking, I always use like, how, how do you verify that a banana is, you know, where it's from sort of thing. And you think of all the constituent parts and crypto, although it protects from like man in the middle attack, it doesn't actually get around the fact that these oracles are still needed to be in place. And I was just trying to think through in my head, like all the different ways where you could feed the information in from trusted sources um to do that but i i don't think you you guys are not looking at sort of supply chain stuff you're more looking at the end result <laughs> it's interesting i think i think the end result is ultimately what we're interested in in terms of the outcomes achieved and in in our example is the skills that are surfaced so if you take a high end watch, then, you know, there are constituent parts that go into making the watch, you know, where the materials are sourced, are they sustainably or ethically sourced? Some of mm. these are really important questions now, both to consumers, but also to retailers uh, and manufacturers. And so being able to evidence that I think is going to be a growing, um, desire for anyone who's wishing to sell and to be able to demonstrate how they're basically having a positive impact on the world as opposed yeah. to um, uh, overall negative impact. 
whether that's carbon or um, employment, et cetera, and avoiding slavery, et cetera, in certain parts of the world. Um, there's been quite a lot done around, I think, blood diamonds and being able to take the identity of a diamond, because I think each diamond is uh, unique in its own right yeah. and there's a way to identify them. So then you have the ability to show provenance of the diamond, where it was found, where it was created, by which mine, is that mine audited and uh, adhering to certain compliance standards, et cetera, that yeah. allow people can feel confident in the purchase. Um, so although I say we're not supply chain, I think there is an element where everything to a degree has a, a reflection of supply chain. Yeah. Um, students come into the system, they have experiences that hopefully create, um, better ability to debate, to discuss, to, um, research and investigate, to, um, present and communicate their uh, findings from their studies. And all of that is generating skills that they wouldn't have had at the beginning of their degree, which then show value add through that process. And then the outcome at the end, which is a graduate who many employers would want to then employ in, in the other examples, I think they're similar, but they're with inanimate objects rather than necessarily with, um, living beings. Yeah. Okay. But the process would be similar and with some of the so with the XRPL grant that we got. It was to investigate, um, blockchain as a service and the use of, um, blockchain verified data to be able to immutably verify, uh, instantly and for free in other people's tech stacks. So, um, if you've got an insurer that says, great, we want to issue an insurance certificate in our own stack. We don't want to use a separate platform. They can then take the, the verification aspect of our solution and apply that to their own, um, their own realm to be able to then also by guarantee verify and check that instantly if the claim is made at point of claim so you're in a car crash if you've got a qr code shows what you covered for instantly you can just get that yeah. set up so there are lots of ways i think it could be used but uh interestingly bass uh, has opened our eyes to lots of people who've got desires that are not in education but have a similar need for the use case that we've created yeah yeah i was gonna there. I was gonna, we haven't created it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask sort of in, on the implementation side, um, yeah. you said you sort of found XRPL first maybe. Um, but to me, it wouldn't have necessarily been obvious that you could implement the system you're talking about with XRP. I guess that's what you got the grant for to do that because that, you know, the ripple, you know, for better or for worse was so focused on payments and it's done exceptionally well focusing on that and then recently it seemed to have gone more it seemed like the explosion in nfts and stuff like that in in ethereum and other stuff solana and it's gone okay i think we need to play a bit of catch up now um now we're, we're seeing these amendments come through people are doing cool stuff like the xls full team was a nice workaround but it's still not probably where it needs to be for this provenance and that's really where XLS 20 comes in, but we can talk about that. Yeah. I, I just wondered how it all fit together, how, how you zoned in on XRPL rather than, I, I don't know what you're doing at the moment, issuing on ERC 20s or what no, sort of happening. It's XRPL, um, that we're leveraging and that we're utilizing for each of our transactions that we create okay. and that we hash the data within that. So there are ways that we're, um, yeah, we've always used XRPL. We've always. Uh, and we used XRP as part of that. So each transaction is back through that. My, I guess the reason that we always used it is when I looked at others, um, it was just, it was just clear that there was, it was on some levels, it was boring. You know, the XRP, I was quite boring. It just yeah. does what it's always done. It was there. It's always done there. It, it, it worked exactly. for 10 like years. 10 years like. <laughs> in, and whatever, 70 million odd um, ledgers closed. It just, it just worked. And I was just, when I was doing my reading and I was listening to the videos and the podcasts, this is going back in 2017. So my first taste of XRP was also when I read that it was going to do cross-border um, transfer of value. And I thought that's brilliant. Bought a little bit enjoyed the end of 2017 as lots of people with XRP did, um, have enjoyed the pain since as well, cause there's been a lot of learning yep. through, that. <laughs> but the, the ultimate point here is that I, I just thought, look at, I, I've always felt this when you look at, um, you're looking at competitive analysis of a market, you look for the individuals, you look for the backing and you look mm. at what the, the problem they're trying to solve and how well they're going to do that. And I just think 
you know, I was exposed to the likes of Brad Garlinghouse or David Schwartz and Wheat's win. And, you know, it's been, has been incredible. He's on our board, Lauren Weymouth's incredible. Like there are such amazing people in yeah. the system that from the very first stage, we, and we were very struck by XRP tip bot and how that worked and how it actually yeah, scaled so quickly and allowed <laughs> so many people to virally tip each other. And we also think, think that there's a, a really exciting future in that area for um, additional credentials, not just institutionally issued ones, um, but almost peer-to-peer -peer credentialed ones. Yeah, endorsement. We're able to endorse yeah. um, We think that that's phenomenally powerful as well. But we just, it, we saw it worked. It hadn't ever stopped working and we wanted to be able to build on something that we weren't going to have to switch back and forth from. There weren't going to be huge varying fees, um, you know, that we've seen with Ethereum, Bitcoin and other blockchains in that respect. Um, there were others that we looked at, but it just felt like it was the most scalable, the fastest, the most, yeah. um, from, for ourselves, carbon, um, likely to become carbon neutral now is, yeah. <laughs> you know, that idea that we wanted something that wasn't going to cost the earth to actually verify everything. Um, that was, that was important to us. And so it just fit at the time. And I think, yeah, I think it was a great decision looking back on it. The grant has then been to be able to extend into other verticals rather than the one that we built on, but we built on it before. we. Ah, okay. It. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that, um, Scott. Chamberlain said exactly the same thing because he was coming at it from a law sort of point of view. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've chatted to him, um, but yeah, r r incredibly intelligent. Um, he, I think he was doing something slightly different and that's how it ended up building into Evernode because uh, yeah. he needed different stuff there. But yeah, it's funny. He said exactly the same thing. He said that, you know, I came at this, I'd looked at something that's going to have, you know, the staying power that's going to last forever. Because if you're verifying credentials, you don't want this thing to something shut down and become a ghost chain <laughs> like yeah. so I was, always, I was always struck because i think brad garling has well cited as saying that you know 90 95 percent or some a significant percentage of tokens will disappear mm. um and that was quite interesting and i don't think that's quite happened yet but i think it might still be likely to happen um in the future but that idea of wanting something that like you say is going to have the longevity to continue um, in sports, uh, when I was a sports psychologist, there was a phrase, which is previous performance predicts future performance. <laughs> and so actually, if you've been going 10 years and you've had no errors, that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> like two years ago. Yeah. It might be more developed. It might be more advantageous, but it might not be here in two more. And so it's that idea of, okay, where's, where can, which wall is strongest on that we can then lean on. And, um, that felt, that felt good. It was also the developer community. Yeah. I mean. It's phenomenally strong in the XRP it, community. It's definitely getting stronger as well. I, I don't know what you guys feel like it is, but um, like even just just a, a a single thing, the Discord being there and stuff like that, and people, the interaction there is it's just constant, and it, it is amazing to see everyone chatting about it. And I think the last time I checked, there was about eight hundred people in it, maybe two months ago, and now it's like almost two thousand. So it's growing incredibly quickly, and. If, you know, if we take that as a proxy, that's, that's in the last couple of months that that's happened. I, 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 th I think it's getting better and better. I really, I a hundred percent agree. I also think that there's a community beyond the developer community that is also very impassioned and very yeah. uh, strong believers in both the team behind what's growing and the developer community, mm. but just passionate about the project overall and what it could bring to society. So, yeah. um, when, uh, the XRPL foundation actually then put the call out to spin up, um, more servers to do the throughput. Actually, it was amazing to see that, um, yeah. Sponsor page just fly in terms yeah. <laughs> of donations and making sure that the XRPL, um, continued to function effectively and efficiently. That was, yeah. One of the most amazing things I've seen. Yeah. That was quite an incredible time. Um, so talking about like the XRPL, XLS20 is probably the most talked about thing. I think we've, we've had a bit of movement towards going yes. I saw Visa had put up his one as yes. Um, what, what, what would it enable for you XLS20? Cause you sound like you're pretty sorted already. Um, <laughs> does it take I, I it think, a step further or? <laughs> yeah, I think there's some interesting use cases that we could investigate, um, with it coming into, into production. I think there are ways that we could actually structure how 
uh, transactions are issued and how the verification verifications happen, which could actually slightly change how we currently do it. Um, mm. we're not committing to anything yet, but we just believe that there's capabilities in, um, that standard coming through for us to be able to, uh, enhance what we currently do and make it slightly more future proofed. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the ability for us to be able to have it all function, even if we weren't here, for instance, in the future, that ability for people's transactions to just remain uh, in longevity. We think there are certain capabilities around that as well, but as I said, it's just really great to see so many community developers actually driving this forward and that strength growing across. Um, mm. I, I probably wouldn't say too much just yet on how we'd use it, but, um, there are lots of, uh, potentials, not just in education that we're really excited about. Yeah. I know there's a big push about, we've sort of touched on carbon, um, yes. a few times and credentials and. <laughs> proving yeah. all that and that brings its own challenges but yeah ripples really seem to be leaning into it with the funding there um yeah. the xrp lf oh yeah i think it's hugely exciting time to be doing credentials <laughs> i think you're in a good spot um talking about the future um yeah. what's the sort of plan for verify ed um going forward is it more clients more customers you said you've got some promising chats with other verticals uh, yeah. another grant in the wings, maybe <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely another grant in the wings. Um, we've also got lots of exciting areas that we're looking to, so with our national, um, partner, we're looking to scale that. So that's a hundred thousand credential nationally wow. uh, as a pilot over the next few months, but scaling up to 2 million credentials. So that's, um, going to be getting a lot of our time and effort. Yeah. Um, but we're also then looking at increasing the number of institutions, both in the UK and uh, around the world. We've had fantastic interest from, you know, colleges in the States to, um, places in Europe in India and in Africa that would all like to, um, have their credentials more trusted internationally and to have those skills surfaced mm. by the, of their graduates as they're going through their systems. And I think that that's again, another opportunity where um, you know, globally, the, um, recruitment of talented individuals is actually quite narrow at the minute, you know, it's yeah. quite selective, uh, educational pathways that result in people having specific qualifications from specific institutions that are then, um, highly sought after. Actually, I'm seeing a shift there where people are saying there are highly talented learners all around the world. And if there are ways that we can better surface the, the talented learners, the voracious learners, the ones that want to. Uh, constantly learn. That's the one that employers have been really singing about. They're the ones that we know that will be with us in 10 years because they'll have adapted, gone through yeah. roles, built teams on the way that are succeeding. And it's, it's actually coming back to almost a mindset and almost to people's, um, approach to learning rather than what they've learned. Now, I think that's going to be an interesting distinction as well, as we start to look and scale internationally. Um, but yeah, we've got. We've got lots of new people to ho hopefully we've got one new one to onboard, which is, um, uh, not for profit, which is doing some really remarkable wor uh, work in Africa. Um, and we've got, uh, we've, we've done a project with the world bank previously, but we've got additional projects that we're hoping to be able to line up there as well. Um, yeah, lots, lots more projects to do with verify ed continuing to validate and see if we can scale, um, the architecture for uh, blockchain as a service for other people to be able to leverage how we've done data verification, uh, mm. and, uh, in a decentralized way. And then, um, yeah, we will, we'll see where we go from there, but every part of the journey has had unexpected elements, some good, some not so good. So we'll just keep taking the challenges and the problems as they come up, yeah. knock them out the park and uh, see where we are in a year. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, I think that's a probably a good place to sort of wrap it up. I don't know if there was anything else you wanted to shout out or, um, tell everyone where you can visit. Obviously I'll put it in the description and all that, um, to find out more, follow you on Twitter. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Thanks. I'll send you some links that you can put in the, the comments. Um, but we, yeah, I just wanted to be able to shout out the team at Verified. They've been uh, epic and amazing to be on the journey with as we've grown, uh, and developed over the last, uh, two and a half years, three years. Um, also wanted to thank the XRPL foundation, um, the Ubri group, uh, Lauren Weymouth in particular, and, um, 
and just everyone in the XRPL community that's been so positive and supportive of us um, and look forward to many more comms going out, sharing the successes as they continue to, to unfold. Yeah. Sounds super exciting. Uh, I'm sure everyone will be uh, really watching closely because yeah, it sounds like you're onto a real winner there. So well, please, if anyone wants to get in touch, please do through the contacts that you provide in. Um, we really want to be, uh, deeply integrated in that community. And so if we haven't spoken to you yet, please do reach out. Okay, great. Um, okay. I guess that's it for today. Thanks to everyone Thank who's still here for tuning in and, uh, uh listening to uh, such exciting prop, uh, problems that are being sold sold by blockchain uh get involved give us a like uh send comments and uh, tell your friends about it because that's how we're going to get the word out um and yeah subscribe and looking forward to the next chat thank you so much Yaz, for being here and uh yeah really excited to see where verify ed goes <laughs> thanks a lot greg really appreciate it have a great right. day